This is Adventist World Radio broadcasting in English from Pune. Hello and a warm welcome to you as you join us. In our program today we have music from Esther Cynthia and The Call. A story for children. Our thought for today is taken from God's word. The topic is love one another as Jesus loved us. This is Maureen your host. I'm Sharad and you're listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Let's begin our program with a song by Esther. When a soul is in pain. You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope for all. And now before we hear a story, we would like to talk a little about family from the Bible point of view. What is a family and how does Bible define it? Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 
explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 says, You are members of God's family. James chapter 1 verse 8 tells us, In his goodness, he chose to make us his own children. The Bible talks about both an earthly family made up of husband and a wife and usually children, and the family of God which is all believers united together by the bond of faith. It is important to spend time with family and show you care for each other. Here's a story told by our friend Sophia entitled Live and Work. Today I would like to share a story of a family. Father was a hard-working man who delivered bread as a living to support his wife and three children. He spent all his evenings after work attending classes, hoping to improve himself so that he could one day find a better paying job. Except for Sundays, father hardly ate a meal together with his family. He worked and studied very hard because he wanted to provide his family with the best money could buy. Whenever the family complained that he was not spending enough time with them, he reasoned that he was doing all this for them. But he often yearned to spend more time with his family. The day came when the examination's results were announced. To his joy, father passed, and with distinctions too. Soon after, he was offered a good job as a senior supervisor, which paid handsomely. Like a dream come true, father could now afford to provide his family with life's little luxuries like nice clothing, fine food and vacation abroad. However, the family still did not get to see father for most of the week. He continued to work very hard, hoping to be promoted to the position of manager. In fact, to make himself a worthily candidate for the promotion, he enrolled for another course in an open university. Again, whenever the family complained that he was not spending enough time with them, he reasoned that he was doing all this for them. But he often yearned to spend more time with his family. Father's hard work paid off and he was promoted. Jubilantly, he decided to hire a maid to relieve his wife from her domestic tasks. He also felt that their three-room flat was no longer big enough. It would be nice for his family to be able to enjoy the facilities and the comfort of a condominium. Having experienced the rewards of his hard work many times before, father resolved to further his studies and work at being promoted again. The family still did not get to see much of him. In fact, sometimes father had to work on Sundays entertaining clients. Again, whenever the family complained that he was not spending enough time with them, he reasoned that he was doing all this for them. But he often yearned to spend more time with his family. As expected, father's hard work paid off again and he bought a beautiful condominium overlooking the coast of Singapore. On the first Sunday evening at their new home, father declared to his family that he decided not to take any more courses or pursue any more promotions. From then on, he was going to devote more time to his family. Father did not wake up the next day. Dear friends, value the families we have. They are a gift of God. Nothing can compare to the time that we spend with our families. Thank you, Sophia, for being with us on AWR. Dear friend, what is our responsibility to our family? The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 7, Repeat God's commands again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, Teach your children to choose the right path, and when they are older, they will remain upon it. Time to hear another song and this is by The Call entitled Teach Me to Love. When I said that I love Jesus, what does it really mean to me? When I said that I will follow, can the other people see?
You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now a message entitled, Love One Another as Jesus Loved Us, that will be presented by Sharath. Dear listener, I am glad to share God's word with you today. And our topic today is, Love. Well, we must, in lowliness of mind, esteem others better than ourselves. We must be severe upon our own defects of character, be quick to discern our own errors and mistakes and make less of the faults of others than our own. We must feel a special interest in looking upon the things of others, not coveting them, not to find fault with them, not to remark upon them and present them in a false light but to do strict justice in all things to our brethren and all with whom we have any dealings, a spirit to work plans for our own selfish interest, so as to grasp a little gain or to labor to show a superiority or rivalry is an offense to God. The Spirit of Christ will lead His followers to be concerned not only for their success and advantage, but to be equally interested for the success and advantage of their brethren. Dear listener, this will be loving our neighbors as ourselves and an opposite spirit 
of this creates differences and alienations and the want of love and harmony oh how out of place is all this strife for supremacy jesus alone is to be exalted dear listener whatever may be the ability or the success of any one of us it is not because we have manufactured these powers ourselves they are the sacred trust given us of god to be wisely employed in his service to his glory all is the lord's entrusted capital why then should we be lifted up why should we call attention to our own defective selves what we do possess in talent and wisdom is received from the source of wisdom that we may glorify god he was god upon earth but he divested himself of the form of god and in its stead took the form and fashion of a man he walked the earth as a man for our sakes he became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich he laid aside his glory and his majesty he was god but the glories of the form of god he for a while relinquished though he walked among men in poverty scattering his blessings wherever he went at his word legions of angels would surround their redeemer and to do him homage but he walked the earth unrecognized unconfessed with but few exceptions by his creatures the atmosphere was polluted with sin and curses in the place of anthem of praise a lot of poverty and humiliation as he passed to and fro upon his mission of mercy to relieve the sick to lift up the depressed scarce a solitary voice called him blessed and the very greatest of the nation passed him by the disdain who is learning the meekness and lowliness of the pattern who is striving earnestly to master self who is lifting his cross and following jesus who is wrestling against self disconceit who is setting himself in good earnest and with all his energies to overcome satanic envies jealousies evil surmisings and uh, cleansing this soul temple from all defilement and opening the door of heart for jesus to come in would that these words might have that impression upon minds that all who may read them would cultivate the grace of humility be self denying more disposed to esteem others better than themselves having the mind and the spirit of christ to bear one another's burdens dear listener only the attitude of christ will heal divisions among people there is nothing which will weaken the strength of a church like pride and passion if one engaged in the work of god does things in contradiction to another engaged in the same work that is strife and variance if we do this to be esteemed or to exalt self it is vain glory and death to spirituality and to christian love and the unity of action let there be no spirit of opposition among christians christ has given us an example of love and humility and has enjoined upon his followers to love one another as he has loved us dear listener let me close by saying some mornings as i leave for work my wife says to me don't forget to dash 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 later in the day she will phone me and ask me did you forget we all have a tendency to forget dear listener i think that uh, maybe why god repeats important truths to us 
twice in Deuteronomy chapter 24, the Lord reminded the Israelites that they were slaves in Egypt, but they had been rescued and redeemed by him, verses 18 and 22. Through Moses he told them, You shall remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you from there. Because they had been redeemed, the Israelites had certain responsibilities that the Lord wanted them to remember. Moses said, I command you to do this thing. Verse 18. What was this thing? They were told to care for the strangers. They were told to care for the fatherless and the widows. If part of the harvest was left in the fields, they were to leave it for these needy people. They reminded them of the people in verse 20 and 21 also. Dear listener, we are redeemed people through Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. We too are told numerous times to be willing to share with those in need. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16 says, Do not forget to do good and to share for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 18 says, Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share. So dear listener, with this beautiful message, may God bless you as you continue to be good citizens of the country. Keep listening to Adventist World Radio for more. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, we thank Thee for blessings of life. We want to share the good news of salvation to people around us. Strengthen us so that we can do Your work. And may we look upon Thee for guidance through Bible, through Bible reading, prayer and worship. May we prepare ourselves to receive You as our personal Savior. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. The pen of inspiration says, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44 Someone has said that the best way to destroy an enemy is to make him your friend. This is consistent with God's command that we are to love those who hate us. Our Lord gave three reasons we should love our adversaries. First, when we show them kindness, we are imitating the Heavenly Father who makes His Son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. Verse 45 Secondly, we are to love our foes because there is no reward for loving only those who love us. Verse 46 Thirdly, dear listener, gracious treatment of our enemies sets us apart from the ungodly. Jesus said, If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Verse 47 Genuine concern for all should be a distinguishing mark of a follower of Christ. 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 21 Obeying Jesus' command to love our enemies doesn't come naturally. However, often our first response is to retaliate. But we choose to display an attitude of love and helpfulness toward those who despise us. We may actually break down their hostility and eventually win their favor. Yes, the best way, the Christ-like way to destroy an enemy is to make him your friend. Definitely we need the help of the Holy Spirit to do that. When my soul is hungry, when my soul is thirsty, when my soul
healing touch when my soul wants peace within. I come to you, my Jesus. You are the only one who meets my need. You are the only one who cares for me. You are the only one, my friend and my Jesus. I come to you when I come to you. Satisfied when I come to you, I'm filled with joy. When I come to you, I'm rest assured. I come to you, my Savior. You are the only one. With this, we have almost come to the end of our program. To learn more on God's love and His plans, do write to us on Adventist World Radio, Post Box Number One Seven, Pune Four One One Zero Zero One, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail dot com. You are also invited to visit our website on awr.org slash English program. This is Maureen. And I'm Sharad signing out from Adventist World Radio. Join us again along with your family and friends. Until then, love one another as Jesus did. God bless you. <laughs>